CNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. Right now, we bring to you former Texas Rangers pitcher and baseball Hall of Famer Ferguson Jenkins. Good afternoon, sir. How you doing? How's everything? We're doing good. We're doing good. Is it okay if we call you Fergie? I don't want to be informal. <laughs> that was my nickname, Fergie. Then that's what we will call you from yes, now on. Yes, that is what he says. How cool is it? Because I know we have a lot of stuff to talk about, but one of the most pressing things to talk about is Saturday. Rangers play the Rockies. First 15,000 fans will get a Fergie Jenkins 1974 replica oh jersey. How cool is it to see entire game promotions built around you? Well, you know, that's a lot of fun. I know that uh, the, the Chicago Cubs have had a couple of bobblehead days. So believe me, it's, it's, it's fun to see fans get a replica uh, especially the bobblehead situation. And this year, the Texas Rangers are giving out a jersey, uh, the 74 replica. I think that uh, it's quite an honor. Is is there another product that you would suggest that you would be like, hey, can we just give out strikes? Because that's what I used to throw all the time. <laughs> well, I don't think they could give out strikes. Okay, gotcha. But, it, <laughs> but that's a it's a noted some uh, situation that uh, – I did throw a lot of strikes when I did pitch. We were just talking about this off air, and I was hoping you could give us, obviously you can give us better insight than just about anybody for this. Second in Cy Young in 74, the closest the Rangers have gotten. And then the Rangers also had, I believe, the MVP that year in Jeff Burroughs. Just how good was that Rangers team in 74? Well, I, I think we were just as good as the Oakland A's. We beat them uh, several times probably more than uh, people want to remember. <laughs> but uh, the thing that uh, was significant to Billy Martin was the manager of the year. Uh, Hargrove was rookie of the year at first base. I was comeback player of the year uh, behind Cy Young winner, uh, uh, Catfish Hunter. And I beat Oakland five times that year. So wow. it was just something that uh, was significant uh, in the Rangers uh, history because of the fact that supposedly they were not going to have a good team. Uh, Jim Bibby that year won 19 games, Jackie Brown 15, Steve Hargan 12 to 15, and I won 25. So we had a pretty good ball club. Sorry for the difficulties we were having there. Is Fergie Jenkins welcome back? How you doing? Good, good. All right. So you were just starting to tell us about how, the how and why of you getting involved with the Harlem Globetrotters. Well, in 1967, uh, Joe Enzovino, who's a marketing individual, with the Globetrotters and their head offices in Chicago on Michigan Avenue wanted me to play in about a good dozen or so games with, with the Globetrotters in Canada. He thought it'd be a, you know, a, a great entertainment situation. Uh, and uh, we, we decided to do it. And I went back to Canada in October because I played basically on a, a 10 month visa being a Canadian. So we, we played in 67, 8, and 9, uh, toured, uh, I don't know how many different states, colleges, uh, different uh, uh, individual clubhouses and, and, and restaurants, things like that. You know, we had a, a lot of fun doing what we do as, as the Globetrotters. Did you feel like you could play in the NBA, Fergie? <laughs> no, I was a major league <laughs> ball player. <Okay. laughs> I was a decent basketball player, but playing in the NBA, that's totally different. Uh, see, the, 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 playing with the low side, they were entertainment. If I got an opportunity to score, I, I took it. And the, the opportunity came quite a bit, but uh, it was just the fact that uh, the, the low sides that played, they were basketball players and entertainers. And I was a guest individual that come on, give up the home run each night to Metal Lark Lemon, do the out-of-bounds skits, the referee skit. But that was just the, up to the fun part of playing. You didn't ever let the Generals win, though, right? Ah, uh, no, the three years <laughs> <laughs> I played with them. They got close a few times, but they never beat the Globetrotters. Were there 180-some games I played, we never lost to them. Were there parts where it turned into like an NBA All-Star game where it was too close and everyone like really bared down for the last few minutes because you're like, no way we're letting them beat us? <laughs> well, see, there were so many different kind of skits that Meadowlark had and Curly and Leon Hilliard. They'd go through a skit, and uh, the other team just didn't have a chance to, to block it or defense on it, and they end up scoring and would run the score back up. 
But uh, that was the entertainment part of having the audience involved and always winning the ball games. So, Fergie, you make it to the Texas Rangers in 1974. I'd love to know how you felt after leaving Chicago, being there for almost a decade, and then coming to the Texas Rangers, Woo! somewhat of a, a new team. I know moving from Washington and your thoughts. Well, you know, the biggest thing is uh, involved in a trade and leaving the National League that had an opportunity to get pitching. The Dodgers needed pitching, Pittsburgh, I think the Cardinals, other teams, and I was traded – out of the National League, to a last-place Texas Ranger ball club. A little disappointed at the beginning, but when I went to one of the team meetings uh, and Billy Martin was there, I said, I'd like to play for that certain individual. And when I went to spring training, I found that this is a ball club that had a chance to win because we had good players. We had some rookies, some veterans, so I was happy to be on that ball club. Why do you think the perception was that that, te that team wasn't going to be good then? Was it just the couple years before? Because you said when you got there, you're like, we got some good guys. Well, they were in last place. Uh, the only good the good thing that happened at Balco was like Jim Beardy Pitts, I know him. But, you know, Bill Martin took over a real strong manager, similar to Leo DeRocher, who I had for like seven years in Chicago. But as I mentioned, you had a hard role, a rookie, Jim Sundberg, a rookie. You know, Alex Johnson, uh, Cesar Tovar, you know, Jeff Burrell's MVP playing right field. We, we had a good nucleus of players. And I just think that the sports writers or the people that are involved outside of the game that didn't know the game thought that we didn't have a good ball club. And we played excellent baseball against Kansas City, Oakland, all and the, the Yankees. We, we beat people in 1974 under Billy Martin. So, Fergie, you have 267 complete games. Obviously, wow. that might take 267 years now for the Major League <laughs> Baseball to get that many again. What was uh, your mentality when you would get into the later innings, the 7th, 8th, ninth inning? Well, you know, you had the user past knowledge and what pitches you threw to certain hitters. And you and the catcher worked closely together because we sat together on the bench. And we would have conferences. Hey, who are we going to? Who are we facing in the sixth? Who are we facing in the seventh? The first three to four hitters of each inning. And we would go over pitches prior, before me going out to the mound. So I knew what I wanted to do. The catcher knew what I wanted to throw and what position we wanted to, to put these pitches in, down the way, up and away, whatever. But the big thing is that total recall of what you did prior to how getting hitters out is something that you had to learn as a pitcher. And I learned that uh, early in the Philly organization. Man, that's Mike talks about the difference between pitching and throwing, and it yeah. seems like <laughs> is, can you kind of explain that difference between pitching totally. and throwing? I think the biggest thing is knowing the hitters, knowing how to set the hitters up, and pitching uh, to certain zones, down and away, middle away, up and away, and then in, uh, breaking pitches in certain counts always trying to stay hitter ahead of the hitter's count, not pitching from behind, three and one, three and two. That gets you in a lot of trouble. So, uh, as I, I mentioned earlier, throwing strikes were part of what my strength was, throwing strikes, getting ahead of the hitter, make the hitter doing part of the work. I made a lot of teams first ball hitters because of the fact that they knew I could get ahead of them quick. But that's the, the art of pitching, not just throwing the ball. Now, you would think, as we talk with Fergie Jenkins, that being a baseball Hall of Famer, winning a Cy Young, playing for the Harlem Globetrotters, that would be enough. But I also have it on good authority that you have a beer Another that's one. out yeah. that's named after you. How did that come to pass? Well, being a Canadian, uh, it's, a, it's a company called the Sons of Kent. Mm -hmm. And I was born in Kent County, Ontario. And the, these young uh, brewers have put this uh, beer together, a uh, Pilsner. They had it last year, uh, or I think, yeah, a year ago, and now they're coming up with another Pilsner with a new can, a new picture on the can, and it's, it's a celebration of uh, having a statue that is erected in Chicago. They're doing a duplicate one in Chatham nice. June the 10th of this year. So they're raising money for certain charities, and I'm involved in that, and, and I enjoy 
the, the fact that they want to put a, a picture of me on a beer and try to sell it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Fergie, you're from Canada. I want. I don't know this. Obviously, I grew up here. I did not grow up playing hockey at all. Did you grow up playing hockey at all? And then, are you following the Stars' run right now? Yeah, I was raised on a on a small ice arena in Chatham, Ontario. I got skates when I was like four years old, and I played as high as junior B. And tried to play, and uh, I think that uh, that was one of the sports I really would have loved to have gotten into the NHL. You know, my one of my idols was Doug. Doug Harvey with the Montreal Canadiens. Followed Gordy Howe, followed Red Kelly, uh, followed so many guys, Rocket Richard. But the biggest thing is <laughs> being an athlete, you, you play a lot of different sports, mm-hmm. and then you find out which ones are your best. And by far, baseball was my best sport. <laughs> <laughs> and I followed, I followed the, the, the Dallas team here. I followed the Red Wings. Uh, I follow uh, Montreal, I follow Chicago Blackhawks, but I think the, the the Stars have a real good opportunity to, if they keep playing well, who knows, it could be Stanley Cup finalists. Oh, do it. love Let's hearing do that, it. and we love talking with you. Thank you very much for the time today, good sir. My pleasure. All right, guys. <laughs> <laughs>